So this is part of a series of webinars we're putting on to show you how to take your law firm virtual and portable during this period of isolation. We're going to be looking at a couple of different areas, the secure web access portal, digital signing with DocuSign and using Microsoft Teams to stay in touch with your clients. The first of those webinars is this, the secure web access portal. So the portal is for potential clients, existing clients and trusted third parties like other side solicitors. It's for taking inquiries, receiving information from clients with questionnaires, sharing files, key dates and matter progress and collaborating on documents. It's all built into Osprey Approach and it's available for all of our customers right now. It's all set up for you. All you need to do is just opt in to start using it on the clients and the matters that you want to. You remain in control of what is shared at all times. Now, even without a lockdown and a work from home situation, today's clients are expecting access to information at any time of day or night. And self-service is an increasing demand. How do we provide that without spending an inordinate amount of time serving emails to and fro, something I call email ping pong, over matter progress or account access to documents? An important point to note here is that email is not the secure method that you might think it is. Generally speaking, they're not encrypted and email accounts tend to be one of the most common things to be hacked. And that's where the secure web access portal really comes into its own. And especially now, lots of our Osprey customers are finding it a really valuable way of sharing and collaborating remotely. So the portal itself is a separate website and you can see it here. The domain is based off your Osprey URL and it's securely housed and hosted within Osprey. Everything other than the new client inquiry form, which we'll take a look at in a moment, is secured behind a username and password login form. Any data sent to and from the browser is encrypted. We can see here that we've got a secure connection with that padlock in your browser. This is a very safe way of sharing, communicating and collaborating on information. Now the design of the portal is customized by our support team to match your branding and your website. So it's a professional and seamless experience for your clients. Access to it is given through a username and password that's sent to your clients or trusted third parties. And in the case of taking new inquiries, it's accessed with a simple link from your website. So with that said, I mentioned just now that there are four key areas of the portal that I'm going to cover. That's taking inquiries, receiving information from clients with questionnaires, sharing files, key dates and matter progress, and collaborating on documents. Let's start off with the first of those, which is a new inquiry. Now, during the current circumstances, we're going to be taking most of our inquiries via our website or over the phone, and we'll be encouraging most of them via the website. We'll be running a webinar all about driving revenue from your website very soon, so keep your eyes out for that. But here I am on my website, and if I navigate through to a will, just here, and I click on the new inquiry button, I'm gonna be taken to a custom form. Now this button is created on your website. You can choose how it looks. You're just linking to a web page here. And as I said, this Osprey form is customized by yourself, uh, and it feeds information directly into my case management system as a new inquiry. I can then just click to convert it to a prospect or a fully converted client with no need to copy and paste from emails. Now it's going to save you time. You might be dealing with a reduction in staff due to furloughing, for example, so we can be more efficient and crucially guarantee the accuracy of that data because we're not copying and pasting or manually transposing that information. So that's taking new inquiries, a really streamlined way of doing it. Now let's look at the rest of the portal and the sharing and collaboration features, which are proving to be crucial right now. A client's given access from within Osprey, so you choose who can use this. And a username, which is their client reference, and a password are emailed through to them. It's a similar process with trusted third parties, which we refer to as associates within Osprey. You add them in this screen and you choose which matters and in which parts of the matter they can access. It's really granular and you can easily ensure only the correct information is shared. 
Now, of course, this isn't an exhaustive webinar because there are plenty of training and support resources to get you started and set up. But we are going to run through the experience of using the portal today. So let's have a look at how that works for a client. So I'm going to log in here and this page would be linked to from your website. So, for example, if we're on my uh, pretend website here, we've chosen to have it at the top here under client portal. So you link to this, make it easy to access for your clients. Then when they log in, immediately I can see a questionnaire that my solicitor has sent me. This one's actually from our pre-built focus workflow for wills. And because it's been assigned to me, I can fill out all of this information remotely that my solicitor has asked me to provide them with for them to progress my will matter. If I just quickly take a look at this, you can see the sort of information that they could be requested through these online questionnaires. Now this one is all built into the wills workflow which I've actually covered in a previous webinar with one of our case management developers and it's actually available for you to use right now if you contact support. But I'm not going to fill that in so let's head over to my personal details. Now this allows me as a client to update them myself rather than having to email or call the firm and let you know of a new phone number or email address for instance. Now I'm not going to update those, I'm going to go through to my matters. Now on the matters screen, which is actually the default screen for a user when they log in if they don't have a questionnaire, I can see a list of the matters that I have access to. Because I'm logged in as a client, I can see my matters. If I was a third party associate, it could be multiple matters here spanning different clients. If I open my matter here, I can see the information that the firm has decided to share with me. So I've got the documents here which have been web enabled and I'll show you how to enable or disable documents in a moment. It's really easy. I've got the workflow stages which reflect the status of my matter and you can choose which tasks or actions to show and you can even disable this whole section if you'd prefer. And finally at the bottom here I've got any outstanding key dates. So this would be important dates as created by a workflow or of course ones that you've manually added like this one, for example a client meeting via webcam. So let's look into documents because this will no doubt be the single most important element of the portal. As a client I can send you a message about a certain document here. I can download and preview the document. So I download it here, I can open up with Word and I can see the document that you've uploaded. I can also preview documents. So for example, if I click here, I can preview this PDF. I can also look at the history of a document to see any versions which have been uploaded using the check in and out feature, which I'll have a look at in a second. So how does this work from the perspective of the lawyer? Well, we're going to open up the Windows app and I'll show you. So here we are in the Windows app and I'm just going to navigate through uh, to the matter history to see the documents. Any document I can right click and simply select web enabled. This will open up the web publishing options. So I can see here that I've got two listed. I've got the client and I've also got the third party, my trusted third party. This is in this case, the, th the other side solicitor. I don't want them to see it, so I'm just going to choose the client and click save. It's as simple as that. That's how you web enable a document. Let's add a file to the matter and see it appear in the portal. So I'm just going to go add a document. And I'm going to go a document for the client here and open that up. I'm going to choose a, let's choose a letter to the client. And then let's just save. That's been added. Let's make sure it's web enabled. So we click yes, it is web enabled. And we choose my client to have access and we click save. Now back in the portal, I now have a document for the client. So it's simple as that. As well as sharing things with the client, I can also receive files from them directly into the matter history. That's so much quicker and safer than email. So if I'm the client and I've received an important letter, for example, I could just take a photo of that and upload it onto the portal for my solicitor. Now, I do this in a part of the portal called the deal room. This is where I can receive or collaborate on documents and files from my client or third parties. 
I simply click create new and I can upload that file, an important document here. And then we click save. There it is uploaded. And now back in the app, I just refresh and I can see the document that they've provided to me here. I can see who it's being created by on the right. So I can see this is being created by my client. And I right click and preview. And this will then open it up on my machine. And I can see that this is the picture of the document that they've sent me. Now, the final part of this two way document sharing is collaboration. Now, that might be on documents we're working on together, for example, the wording of a letter or a contract or other kinds of documents. When a document's been published by any party into the deal room, it can be checked out and back in with the changes. Checking a document out tells other people that I'm working on it and minimizes the risk of conflicted changes to a file. So here I've got the check out button. If I click on this button, I'm going to do it on a document because I want to uh, make some changes. I'm going to make a little note here about the changes that I'm going to be making on this document and I'm going to check it out. Now I'm going to save the file to my download. We simply open that up document up and I'm going to edit it. Save that document and now I'm going to upload it again when I go to check in. So now I click on the check in button. I select the file that I'm checking in, which in this case is this one here. And then I'm going to check in. And now I can see in my history that I've got two versions. And I can see here what the changes were. And I can download each copy of that document and see the changes over time. You can see the full edit history. So that's a really powerful way of collaborating on documents with not only your client, but importantly, trusted third parties like other side solicitors. So to summarize the really key features of the portal for remote working that we've just looked at. We can take inquiries via our website. We can receive information from clients with questionnaires. We can share files, key dates and matter progress remotely with clients and trusted third parties. And we can collaborate on documents with checking in and out of files. The other webinars in this series are going to show you how to use the powerful functions of the web access portal, along with digital signing of documents with DocuSign and interactive web-based meetings using Microsoft Teams to really ramp up your productivity with your clients whilst in isolation and achieve the virtual portable law firm that we're talking about.